Hi, this is Tony Sagami. I want to tell you a little bit about shopping since we're coming up on the holiday shopping season. We're going to talk about shopping in China and Asia. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because Walmart recently reported their third quarter results. And they reported some pretty good numbers. They reported a 9% increase in third, third quarter profits to $3.4 billion. Not bad for 90 days worth of work. More impressively, Walmart even raised its full year 2010 guidance from uh, $3.95 to $4.05 to as much as $4.08 to $4.12. So that increase in guidance was pretty impressive. On the surface, uh, $3.4 billion of quarterly profits and upwardly revised guidance sounds like a pretty positive picture, but with some very revealing factoids in that Walmart results. For example, for the sixth month in a row, Walmart reported a decline in U.S. same-store sales. Six months in a row. Uh, in the last month, same store sales re uh, dropped by 1.3%. That's pretty uh, discouraging. Now, what that means, though, is that 9% profit growth came from somewhere, and it didn't come from the United States. Where it came from was outside of the U.S. For example, Brazil same store sales were up 12.4%. China was up 15.2%. You know, and uh, as a matter of fact, the very first uh, Sam's Club is set to open in Shanghai in December. Walmart currently has 192 stores in China. And here's what they had to say. Our international business uh, continues to deliver impressive results with sales up more than 9.5%. Now, Walmart has added 10 million square feet uh, of new shopping stores in the last three years, but 37% of that has come from outside of the U.S. In the last 12 months, Walmart's opened 32 new stores in China, 79 new stores in Brazil, and 256 new stores in Mexico. You know, Walmart specifically cited Japan, China, and India as its primary growth targets going forward. Uh, and uh, here they even said this. It said, we are very interested in growth and are willing to increase market shares through M&A. What that means is that Walmart is going to buy its market share in Asia. Uh, it's already done a little bit of that. It owns Seiyu. It's a large Japanese retailer with 414 stores in Japan, but that's not enough. It wants even more. Now, who else could Walmart perhaps be looking at? You know, there are three Asian retailers that are traded here in the U.S. over-the-counter market that I think you might want to take a look at. You know, the first is Carefor. Uh, that ticker symbol is C-R-E-R-Y dot P-K. C-R-E-R-Y dot P-K. That's a large French re retailer, but it has a presence all over Asia. Uh, another large Japanese one that could uh, be available is uh, Icitan Mitsukushi. Uh, its ticker symbol is imhdf.pk. Imhdf.pk. And the last one, and I think the most attractive one, is a company called Woomart. Yes, Woomart. Like Walmart, but Woomart. You know, the Chinese uh, don't have a lot of respect for U.S. copyrights. And so there's a lot of instances where the Chinese name is very similar to a well-established American counterpart. But Woomart, uh, which means good product, has 435 stores in China, and its hypermarkets are always packed to the gills with customers. I've been in Walmart stores in China, and they're usually very, uh, very busy, but not like Woomart. Those are packed. It seems to have a, a better handle on that Chinese market and uh, what they like, whether that includes fresh fish flopping out of the tanks or uh, turtles crawling around on the ground or uh, vegetables that you've never seen. Woomart really has that Chinese market figured out. Will either one of these three be the one that Walmart takes over? Who knows for sure, but I tell you, these are three Asian wall, uh, retailers, especially Walmart, that are scheduled for uh, some very prosperous growth overseas. Until next week, this is Tony Sagami signing off.